Oh, great worshiping this morning. Uh, hey, good to see you guys. Thanks for being here again this morning. Uh, we are in the middle of this uh, series. Uh, we started some weeks back called uh, Me Too. Everybody needs somebody. It's this, it's this series that looks at different aspects of, of uh, things that affect really all of our relationships, whether it's with a, a spouse or kids, uh, neighbors, coworkers, bosses, uh, other family members, whatever. It's, it's different aspects of relationship that affect all of that. And this morning, we're specifically looking at the, uh, the topic of boundaries. And, uh, and I think that you'll find that boundaries definitely affect all all of our relationships in one, one form or another. So I've entitled this No Trespassing. Uh, <laughs> so uh, a, a while back uh, in the early 90s, there was a, a, a book written called Boundaries uh, by uh, Dr. Uh, Henry Cloud and John Towns. And it was a, a great book, had a lot of good things to say about boundaries. Some of what we'll talk about today has come out of that book. Uh, if you really kind of like where we go this morning and want to check more of it out, I, I'd encourage you to, to pick that up. But boundaries are something that we experience uh, all through life in multiple ways and forms, right? One of the first experiences that we have with boundaries is just this awesome thing that God gave us called skin. Skin is this incredible boundary, right? Because it, it, it keeps germs and bad things out of our bodies, and, and it keeps good things like blood and organs inside of us where they belong. When my kid says to me, hey, Dad, I'm going to go tubing down the Salt River. Uh, I went down that Salt River when I was in high school, and I, and I saw the things that go into that river. Uh, so so I, I, I said, okay, you want to go tubing? The, okay, take your shirt off. You, you know, like kind of strip down, put your arms out, let me check you over. Because if there's any open incisions that you have on your skin, you can't go down that river because I know what's going to get inside of you. Your skin is no longer a boundary. You go in one, you come out gangrene four hours later uh, when you get out of the tube on the back end. It's a bad, just trust me, check, check your, uh, words, words are, words are a good boundary. What's one of the first words, first boundary words that we learn and use in life? No, yes, many of you are very familiar with that word, you hear it all the time. Yeah, no, we're just little first word, no, it, it's this boundary word. It's saying, no, I, I don't want this or I don't like that, and, and maybe I, I do want that or I do like that thing over there. There's geographical boundaries, right? Probably wherever you live, uh, there are, it's, there's some type of borders geographically that separate you from the person that's dwelling or living uh, in the space next to you or in the house or whatever it might be uh, next to you. There's emotional boundaries that we put up and we just say, hey, I'm not going to let that person or those people get any closer to me. I'm going to create a boundary uh, in that way. Truth. Uh, truth in and of itself is a type of boundary because truth says, hey, here is what's right and, uh, and, the, and the good thing to do and here's what's wrong and, and the bad thing to do. Truth becomes a type of boundary. Um, uh, last week we had uh, 500 kids here at VBS, and maybe you're wondering, man, how, how, do, you, how do you keep any type of order uh, to 500 first through fourth graders? So here's a picture, and, and if you look at the ground, you'll see tape marks, the, and the tape creates boundaries. There's some yellow tape to the left there. Maybe you see the red tape to the right, and it's like, we, hey, we just tell the kids, look at the color of your shirt. Okay, find the tape that matches and sit inside all of that color of tape. And it kind of sort of works a little bit, um, <laughs> as, as well as anything can. So, uh, so some, people, uh, some people have good boundaries, don't they? They're, they're just, you kind of look at them, maybe you're one of them, it's just like, man, that person, they have such good boundaries. Then there's other people, there's other of us, we just struggle with this. We have poor boundaries. Um, maybe you're not sure what you have. Let me, let me read a couple questions off for you and uh, just answer these on your own. Uh, no elbowing the person next to you. <clears throat> uh, do you ever feel like people take advantage of you or use your emotions for their own gain? Uh, do you ever feel like you're constantly having to save people close to you and fix their problems all the time? I feel the need to remind you, please just keep them kind of tucked in tight like this, okay? Uh, do, you do you find yourself sucked into pointless fighting or debating regularly? And your relationships, does it feel like things are always either amazing or, or horrible with no in-between? Or perhaps you even go through the breakup uh, reunion pattern every few months. Do you tell people how much you hate drama, but always seem to find yourself stuck right in, in the middle of it? Uh, and here's the last one. Do you spend a lot of time defending yourself for things that you believe aren't your fault? 
You know, if you answered yes to, to a couple of those, then, then I think, you know, we can all use some help with some of these uh, boundaries. So uh, maybe it sounds like psychological sort of babble, you know, a little bit. Like, is this, is this like a real thing or does some just like overpaid doctor guys figure out a way to sell another book, you know? Um, but I think there's something really true to this whole boundary thing. I think there's something good to it. I think it's an important thing. I think it's all throughout the Bible. And if you're taking notes uh, in your bulletin, there's some notes. Take those out if you want to jot something down. Here's the first thing. Uh, God is a God with boundaries. God is a God with boundaries. Th- think about this with me. Uh, God says, he makes very clear, I am love. I am a God of love. I'm not a God of hate. I am a God of love. Okay, that's a boundary. I am this and I'm not that. God says, I am light. I am not darkness. I am light. That's a, he's creating a boundary that says who he is and who he's not for that matter. Uh, uh, think, think, about, uh, think about the Trinity with me, right? We just sang about it. God the Father God the Son, God the Spirit, Uh, they're equal, they're equal uh, within the Godhead, but yet each one has their own sort of responsibilities or functions that they carry out, boundaries. Uh, Think of uh, truth in and of itself, you know, God's limits that he sets, that when he says, when you live this way, this is a right way to live, and good things happen to you when you live that way. But if you live this way, that's wrong and bad, that's sinful, and bad things will come to you when you live, harmful things when you live that way. He's creating limits. He's creating boundaries. Uh, Open up, if you have your Bibles, uh, to Genesis. And uh, I want us to look at a passage, probably a familiar passage to many of you, but I want us to look at it and think about it specifically in the context of boundaries this morning. So Genesis chapter 2, right there in the beginning of your Bible, uh, pretty easy to find. This is this is right after uh, all creation's done. God's made everything. He's created the world, and, and that part's done. And then he's having this conversation with Adam. And, uh, and look what he says to Adam. Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 15 says, uh, The Lord God took the man, and he put him in the garden of Eden to, to till it and to keep it. So in other words, he says to him, Adam, uh, here's this garden. This is your space. This is your property, and, and you are to be responsible for this property. You, you are to have ownership over this. I want you to work this ground, to till it, to keep it, to take care of it. Okay, that's your job. So, so jobs and work, by the way, you know, they're, they're not a bad thing. Uh, they just kind of become worse later because of sin, but, they're, but they're, they're a good thing. Adam, take care of take care of the ground. That's your space. Look at verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man and said, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. So God says, again, here's your garden. You're responsible for this space. You're to have ownership over this space. Take care of it. Work the, work the ground. But Adam, there's this tree over here, and it is outside the boundaries that I've made for you, that I've created for you. I don't want you to to touch that one. In fact, if you, if you do touch it or go near it, you will, you'll die. There'll be something bad that comes to you. So God's boundaries that he has and that he creates and that he even gives to us, they, they do some things. They give us, you know, they show us what we're, what we're responsible for, right? And they offer a type of protection for us. If you eat of this, if you step outside this boundary, you'll die. They offer protection for us. And even some, you know, consequences when we when we break those boundaries. And so uh, here's the key idea this morning. If you, again, if, if you want to write something down, the key idea is that boundaries, they, they define us. They define us and they protect us as well as we just talked about. They define us and they protect us. Uh, and in doing that, don't miss this, in doing that, they keep us healthy. This is why boundaries are important. This is, this is why we're talking about this this morning. And, uh, you know, Palmer's gone. He's, he's in Africa. He knows what I'm talking about. He's like, oh, that's great. Go with that. That's why this is important because uh, boundaries keep us healthy. Healthy people, we could say it this way, healthy people usually have good boundaries. You'll usually find uh, healthy people with good boundaries. And, of course, conversely, sometimes uh, unhealthy people will probably have poor, uh, poor boundaries. So, uh, boundaries, they define us, they protect us, uh, keeping us healthy. Let's, let's think about this more together. Boundaries, they, they define us, okay? They, they define us. Boundaries say, this is what is me, and this is what is not me. 
So I, I, there's a four, I think it's four, uh, three or four bushes uh, that my neighbor has uh, in the front yard. And, and, uh, and I noticed that, uh, you know, th- a few of them were taken care of and trimmed and kept, and, and one, one wasn't really at all. It was just kind of left. And I thought, man, I wonder, wonder why he's not, you know, taking, taking care of, of his other bush there. He's taking care of the other three. You know, and, and then I was standing in the front yard, I was on the sidewalk, and I'm, and I'm kind of looking back at the wall that separates my yard and his yard. It's, it's this, I'm in the front yard now, so that wall's set back a little bit, so I kind of see it there. And I, and I sort of envision that wall coming all the way to me where I'm standing on the sidewalk, and I realize, oh, that's why he's not taking care of his bush. Because it turns out it's actually on my property, and I'm responsible for, it's actually my bush. So... Felt a little bit bad about that, and then started uh, trimming into taking care of. That's what, that's what boundaries do. They say that you are responsible for this, and you're not responsible for that. They define, uh, they define who, who we are. So I uh, just want to take a quick moment and apologize right now if uh, some of you are having horrible memories of when you missed your flight because of airport security. That's not my intention, okay? Just give me a second here. All right. So boundaries, uh, boundaries do this. They create this space. And boundaries, boundaries say, hey, everything in here, this, this is me, okay? This is me. And because this is me, this is my property, this is what I have ownership over, then this is what I'm responsible for. This is me. And, and what's outside of these boundaries, that is not me. And because it's not me, I'm not responsible for those things. This is where I where I end and where someone else uh, begins. Uh, in Galatians, you may remember when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, that it, it talks about uh, one of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. It, it, it's not other control. It's self-control, that we're to have responsibility for, for ourselves and what's in, in our space, right? What's within these, these boundaries in my property. Now, now here's where this goes a little sideways for some people, okay? Um, I, maybe there's a lot of ways, but I'll just give you a, a couple examples here. So some, some people, they, they have these boundaries, and, and these boundaries, they, they define us. They say, this is what is me and what's not me. And the whole point of that, right, is I take responsibility for this, but there's some people, they just, they just don't do that. You know, they, they don't take responsibility for anything. And if you look inside of their space of what is them, it's a mess, it's, it's, it's a mess. It's a disaster. Things are kind of broken. It's just a, nothing goes right. It's just a big mess because they don't take responsibility for that. And instead, often, often they blame, they blame other people uh, for their problems. And they make excuses for everything that goes bad and is wrong in here. You know, it's not my fault. I just happened to get, you know, the fifth boss in a row in the last eight months who is a jerk and fired me. You, you know, what are the odds of that? But that's just the point. Everything goes wrong for me. Everything goes bad for me. It's always somebody else's fault. Nothing ever goes, uh, goes my way or goes easy for me. They make excuses uh, instead of taking responsibility for their stuff. So let, let me just say, like, if you have a 30-year-old kid, child slash adult, who's living in your in your home, maybe, you know, and they're, they're, they're living there because, they, uh, because nothing goes right for them, and they can't ever seem to hold down a job, and, and they keep getting, you know, expelled out of colleges and such because, I don't know, they, like, don't do anything and turn stuff in, and, and you know, but it's all, but it's somebody else, and the dog eats the homework. It's just, it's always someone else's fault, someone else's problem, uh, if you allow them, you know, to continue to kind of stay with you, you're, you're probably not helping them at that moment, right? You're, you're, not, you're not creating something that's healthy and good for them, which is what boundaries we said are supposed to do. Instead, you're actually enabling them, right? You're, you're enabling them to continue to not take responsibility for their stuff, to continue to make excuses and blame everybody else or everything else of why everything's wrong and nothing goes their way. You're just enabling them to continue in that uh, mindset and in that lifestyle instead of actually helping them, helping them by, by uh, doing everything within your power and ability to help them take responsibility for their lives, for what is 
them. What makes them what makes them them? There's another uh, there's another way that we kind of go a little bad with this. Is some people maybe maybe they take responsibility for their stuff. Okay, so they they do that as opposed to the last one. But they also like to take responsibility for everyone else's stuff. They like to, they like to step, kind of lean over their bonds and say, hey, let me, let me take care of that for you and, and your problems and fix that. I, I've got a uh, scenario here that I want to just read, read uh, to you. So this is an example of a couple, a guy, a girl, dating relationship, and here's how this scenario goes. Uh, hey, I was thinking about that new job you're looking for. So I, I went ahead and redid your resume, and I've started sending it out to some people in my HR department. <laughs> wow, um, thanks, but you didn't have to do that. Oh, I wanted to do it. I want you to be successful. Oh, and I also bought some new decorations for your apartment. Wow, well, I'm not ready for that yet. Oh, well, I know, but, but it only makes sense. I mean, we've been dating now for nine months. Uh, well, last month you replaced half my wardrobe with clothes that you want me to wear. Now you want to redecorate my apartment and you want me to work with you too? But, but I love you and I want to take care of you. Well, I love you too. You're psychotic. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you, but you have to let me do things my own way and in my time. This, this isn't healthy. And boundaries are meant to keep us healthy. You take control of my life decisions without consulting me first. Well, I can't believe how selfish you are. I do everything for you, and now you're blaming me for it? Well, if you really care about me, then you need to stop trying to control my life and let me live it on my own. We're not meant to take responsibility for other people. That, that can, sometimes that just causes us to want to fix everybody else and save everybody else, and that, that's not the point either. Right? Boundaries define us. This is what is me and what I'm responsible for, my property and ownership to take care of. Now, maybe you're kind of thinking, wait, but I, I thought there's a sense in which aren't we supposed to help others? Isn't there a sense in which we are responsible, you know, for others in that? So let, let me say it this way, ready? Uh, I'm responsible for me and to others, but not for others. Okay? You. You are responsible for you. And you, you are also responsible to other people, but not for, but not for them. Each of us are responsible for the things within our boundaries, the things that make me, me. And you are responsible for things that make you, you. But there is a sense in which we come alongside each other. Uh, look at this passage in Galatians. If you want to turn there, Galatians 6, Paul kind of explains it well with a, uh, in a couple of verses there. Galatians 6 verse 2. He says this, hey, I want you to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And you say, yep, see, there it is. Bear one another's burdens. Come, come alongside and, and help each other, care for each other, pick, take each uh, take each other's burdens up, pick them up. Uh, but look at a few, verse, a few verses later in verse 5. For each will have to bear his own load. It almost seems like conflicting messages, doesn't it? In one, in one sense, it's saying, you know, bear each other's burdens. And then just a couple verses later, he says, hey, bear your own. Take care of your own. It's like, well, which one is it? But uh, those are different words. So that word burden, and when it says bear one another's burden, that word burden is the idea of something that is, is really heavy and weighty, something that's really difficult and, and challenging and hard. And Paul's basically saying, hey, when there's, when there's people that are you know, in your life that you know and they are experiencing some type of burden or weight, some type of difficulty that is too much for them, then you have a responsibility to them to help them with it at that moment. It would be like the example of someone that, you know, comes home and their spouse says, I'm leaving you. You know, that, that's it, I'm done. It's like, oh, this, this burden, that, that, the weight of that, I, I can't bear that alone. And we have responsibility at that time to come alongside them and to help them carry that. So here's a question for you this morning just to simply think about. Is there, is there someone that has a burden that you can help carry? Is there someone that's living in their space, in their boundaries, but they've got such a weighty burden they need you to come alongside and, and help ease the weight of 
that burden. Uh, but then going back to verse 5, he says, yeah, but hey, but each one bear his own load. And the word load there is referring to more of the, the normal things of life, the, the, the daily things that you and I are meant to carry. It's, it's referring to the normal things that live within this space. The, the things that exist within here that's just like, you know what, we, and we often just say it this way, hey man, hey, that's life. Oh, but I don't want to do that. Oh, but that's hard. Hey man, that's just life. Some, some things are hard. We all have loads to carry. Some things aren't easy. Some things are tough. Yep, we fall down. We got to get back up. Yep, you got to hold down a job. Yep, if you want to go to school, it's going to take some work. It's going to, you've got to like actually work to pass the classes a little. Yep, you know, you, you may have to save some money. Like that's just, it's life. It's the normal load that you carry. And when it comes to those things, notice what he says. Hey, bear your own load. I'm responsible for me. I'm responsible for my load that I carry. I'm not responsible for your load, for the, for the normal, everyday things in your life that maybe you're like, ah, I just, I don't want to deal with it. I want someone else to take care of everything for me. No, it's up to, it's up to you to do. And so here's a, a question to think about. Are you carrying a load of someone else that you need to let go of? You need to let it go. You think you're helping them. You think you're helping your 30-year-old child by just continuing to live for free and do nothing and kind of just like fail at life over and over and over and, and, don't, and you know, not take on any responsibilities and you, you think you're maybe helping them by you know, rescuing them or saving them or trying to fix them, but maybe you're really not helping them. Maybe you're enabling them and, and actually that's a load that you need to let go of. You need to let go of. Uh, so response, uh, uh, boundaries, they, they define what we're responsible for and what that looks like in our lives and what that looks like in the people's lives around us. But boundaries do something else uh, that we said from Genesis that, or that we saw in Genesis. Boundaries, they offer a bit of protection. Boundaries uh, protect us. Uh, God said, when you eat of that tree, Adam... If you step outside the bounds of this garden that I've given you, if you step outside and you eat of that tree, you will die. So this boundary that I'm giving you, it's meant to protect you, to keep you safe, Adam. If you step out of it, you will die. In Proverbs, it says, it says this in 4, uh, 4.23, hey, keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the spring of life. Keep your heart. Protect your heart. Uh, keep yourself safe. You're not being selfish if you're living in ways to, to protect your heart. That, that's not being selfish. That's just being smart. That's following what Proverbs says. You're, you're not being selfish if you're creating boundaries to protect and keep uh, your heart. And, and some of you, some of you are thinking this. You're thinking, oh, I got the protection thing down. Don't you worry about that one. I'm with you. The boundaries, my boundaries, my boundaries protect me real well because they're, they're 10 feet thick. They're 10 feet thick and they're 100 feet high. See, my, my boundaries, they're, they're, it's like a barricade. And I, have, and I have, it's a fortress around me and I have shielded myself and hunkered down inside of that because no one's ever going to do that to me again. I am never going to be taken advantage of like that. I'm never going to be violated. I'm never going to be abused again like that. And so you've turned your boundaries into walls, and you've isolated yourself in many ways, and you've barricaded yourself in in many ways. But, but here's the thing. Boundaries, they're not meant to be walls. They're not meant to be walls. In fact, not only that, but boundaries actually need to have gates. Boundaries need to have this space to them where we can open it up and create a way for some things to flow out or get out that need to get out and for other things to come in that need to come in. Uh, we, we need to have a, a gate that we can open and allow the bad to get out. There's some things inside of our lives, inside of me, inside of our hearts in here that that are just, that are not, they're not good for us. And we need to create a way in which the bad things in our space can, can get out. 
So uh, 1 John, it's a, uh, uh, 1 John 1, 9 says, hey, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just uh, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Maybe there is some sin in your life, in your heart, and it's a and it's a bad thing. It's a harmful thing, obviously. It's just, it's a sickness in your heart and it needs to get out. But if you've turned this boundary into this, you know, barricade wall, it has nowhere to go. It could just, it could just fester and just continue to just squelch your heart. We need to have gates where we can confess something like that and let that, let that bad get out of us. Because when the bad gets out, it's a way in which we then become healthier right? Uh, here's an, another example. In, uh, in 1 Corinthians 5, Paul's writing, he says, hey, now I'm writing to you not to, not to associate with anyone who, who bears the name of brother or sister. He's talking about someone that says, hey, I'm a Christian just like you. I want to help you follow Jesus. Let's kind of hang out together. Let me in your space. Let's, let's spend time together and be good friends. He says, but this person that claims to, to be a brother or sister, they're uh, they're sexually immoral or greedy or an idolater or reviler, drunkard or robber. He says, don't even, uh, do not even eat with such a person. Uh, jump to verse 13 there. God will, God will judge those outside. And this is what he says about that person. Drive out the wicked person from among you. He's basically saying, hey, if you've got some people inside your boundaries, if, if you've got some friends, if you want to call them that, inside your, your, your boundaries that you're, that you're living life with, that are in your space, and they're saying, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian like you. I'm going to help you follow Jesus just like this. And, but there's someone that's living in this blatant, ongoing, continuous sin. He, he's not talking about someone that you know, does something wrong one time and is like, hey, I'm sorry and repent. And he's, that's not the example at all. He's clearly talking about, hey, these people that are, they're greedy. You know, they're, they're robbers. They're living sexually immoral lives. It's this continuous, ongoing way. That's how they're living. And they're inside your space. They're, they're, they're kind of running with you in life, saying that's, that's not going to be healthy for you. That's not going to be, that's not going to be good for your heart. So with that wicked person, he says, hey, just get them out. Get, get somebody like that. Get them out of your life. Because if they're within your boundary, they're, they're not going to help your heart be healthy. They're actually going to hurt your heart. So our boundaries have, have these gates that we need to open up to let some bad things flow out that need to get out. If we just bunker and barricade and wall ourselves in, Bad stuff has nowhere to go. But then on the flip side, there's good things that need to come in, right? This gate, when we open this, it allows some, some good to come in. Go ahead, uh, let's look at 1 Corinthians together. Or sorry, 2 Corinthians 6, 11 and 13, Paul says, we have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our hearts are wide open to you. Paul says, man, my heart, I've opened the gate of my life. I've opened it. My heart's wide open to you. There's no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. Man, in return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. He's saying, some of you, it's like you've walled, you've walled off yourself. And he's saying, open, I just wish you would open up your heart. I wish you would just, to the gate, to the, you know, the gate of your boundary of your heart, I wish you would open it so that the affections that we have for you so that the affections that we have for you, the love that we have for you, that we could bring it to you. But Paul's like, it's like he's walking around like, but we can't get in because every gate all around, every, everything's blocked off and walled off. You've shut everybody out. You're keeping everybody at an at a arm's length, at a distance, and, and we can't get into you. Our hearts are open to you. I just, I wish that you would open your hearts to us. Would you let us come in so that we could encourage you and love you and help you and support you and, and say good, truthful things to you that you need to hear that are important? But man, I just, I wish you would open wide your hearts, but instead you've walled off. And those people, and maybe you, are on the inside saying, I'm not going to let anyone in. I'm, I'm not going to let people in. I'm too afraid. I'm too afraid of what happens if I open this gate. I'm too afraid of, of what's, I'm scared of what's going to happen if I open this gate. I would, I'd, rather, I'd rather just create a fortress and keep everybody out so I never have to worry about 
about getting hurt again. I never have to worry about being taken advantage of again. I never have to worry about being, being violated again. I never have to worry about any of that stuff. But, but the problem is there's some good things out here that need to get into you. And, you're, and, and maybe you're saying, no, no, you, you, you don't really want to help me. You say that you want to help me, but I can't really trust you. You say you want in to do good things uh, for me, but, but you don't really want to do that. You really just want to take advantage of me again. So no, I'm going to keep the gate closed. Or for many people, they just say, no, I, I, you know what? I can't open the gate. I can't open it. And, and even if I did, if I opened this up and allowed you to walk in, man, once you see what's in here, if I, I open that gate and you walk in, when you see what exists in this thing called me, in this space called my, my, my space, my property, my ownership, what I'm responsible for, you won't want anything to do with me. You'll, you'll, run, you'll, you'll run back out that gate so fast, uh, you'll be wishing I'd ever opened it in the first place. This takes a great amount of courage, doesn't it? This takes a great amount of bravery a great amount of faith, a great amount of trust and, and courage to say, I'm going to be willing to open this gate, to allow some bad stuff to get out that needs to get out of here because it's a sickness and it's hurting my heart. And I'm going to open it up to allow some good things to come in to help my heart. And in doing all of that, what do we, what do we become more of? Healthier, healthier people. So let me, uh, let me just close with a few final thoughts of how we uh, create some of these boundaries today. Um, here's, the, here's the first thing. Just take a heart checkup. You know, this whole, everything we're talking about today, we're talking about how this keeps our hearts healthy, right? Kind of the point of these boundaries. Yeah, they, they define us and protect us to keep us healthy. So take a heart checkup. Listen to your heart. Look at your heart. Is it saying, man, there's this huge area of sin that's just eating away and destroying your heart? Is that, is that what your heart is saying to you when you do a checkup? Is, is your heart saying to you, I am hurting so much because of, of how that person or those people just continue to take advantage of me? I'm just, I'm hurting. I'm hurting so badly of how that person or those people, they violate me or abuse me. Is your heart saying that to you today? Uh, is your heart saying, man, I'm just, I'm so lonely Man, you've barricaded me in here. You've built these walls that are 10 feet thick, 100 feet high. I'm just, I'm so isolated. I'm so lonely. Would you please, would you please open up a gate? Please allow some, some companionship to come alongside. Is your heart saying, I'm about to die because you work 70 hours a week? You don't take, you know, there's no time off. There's no anything. I'm just, you're driving me and driving me and I'm going to give out on you if you don't change something. Is your heart saying, man, I am so empty and far from God? Where, where did God go? Is your heart just like it? You, 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 you lost God. He's nowhere to be found. So take, take a heart checkup and then just create uh, or identify the boundaries uh, that you need to have. You know, if your heart is like, yes, there's this area of sin and it's a disease and it's killing me, today, can I encourage you, please, open, open up a gate and allow that sin, confess that to someone, get it out of your space because it's hurting your heart. You know, if your heart is saying, this person has hurt me, I'm, I'm hurting by how they take advantage of me, then maybe you need to, to create a boundary and say, I'm, I'm not going to be taken advantage of again by that person. I'm not going to allow that person to abuse me or violate me again. I, I'm not going to do that. It's not going to happen again. That last time was the last time. If your heart's saying, I'm so empty and far from God, but maybe tell you, just say, okay, that's it. On this day, at this time, this is my space and boundary and time, God, it's me and you. And nothing is going to come in the way of it anymore. I'm not going to make excuses and blame, I'm so busy and the, the, there's so much going on, I just don't have time. I'm not going to make excuses. I'm going to take responsibility for that. My heart is empty and desperate for God. So now on these days at this time, God, it's, it's me and you. It's just, it's me and you. And, and I'm going to take that, that empty gauge in my heart and, and I'm going to start filling it back up. 
If your heart is like, I'm so isolated and lonely, would you open up and allow a someone to come in? Would you be willing, would you be willing, though it's scary, to say, I'm going to turn my walls back into boundaries and I'm going to open up the gate so that this isolation and loneliness that I have can be removed. If you're, if you're working like crazy, would you, that's it. That's it. I'm going to, this day, I'm not going to work. I'm going to, I'm going to rest. I'm going to take some time off before my heart just gives out completely and I shut down. I'm going to say, on this day of the week or this time, no working anymore. I'm going to play. I'm going to rest. I'm going to allow my heart to start to come alive uh, and beat again and, and such. And, and here's a third thing for you. A stand by your consequences. Stand by your consequences. Remember when God says to Adam, hey, Adam, here's the garden, here's the boundary, take it to your responsibility. That tree over there, that's not your responsibility, Adam. Don't, don't eat of that one. Don't worry about it. And if you do, you will die. That was the consequence, remember? Well, if we read on a few verses later, you know what we read? God says, Adam, from the ground, from the dust, I made you. And back to dust, back to the ground, you will return. God stood by his consequence. Now, in his great kindness and goodness and love and mercy, he provided a way through his son Jesus so that we could all be fully redeemed and restored back into relationship with him. That's how great God is. But he also stood by his consequences. Listen, boundaries without consequences, they're not really boundaries. They're not boundaries. They're their, uh, their wishes, their suggestions, their lines in the sand that very easily can just be kind of brushed over and, and go away. Our boundaries uh, have to have consequences, and we have to stand by those consequences, even though that as well can be a scary thing to do. And, and lastly, uh, pray. Pray. Pray, pray and get help. Pray because it takes great wisdom to even maybe know what boundaries to make in the first place at times. Maybe you need some real wisdom and clarity. God, what boundary do you want me to make? And get support. Some of the boundaries that you may need, you may not be able to do them on your own. And that's okay. We're not meant to do this all alone. So get some support. Get some help from other people that can help you create the right kind of boundaries, the appropriate ones that you need. Boundaries, they define us and they protect us. And in doing all of that, they, they keep us healthy. They keep us healthy so that we can be uh, healthy people that God created us to be.